Okay, and so now it, it's uh, gives me a great pleasure to uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Justin Renkma, who's a research scientist in entomology with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. His research focuses on developing integrated pest management strategies for grapes, tree fruits, and berry crops. Dr. Dr. Renkman earned his PhD from Dalhousie University and conduct, conducted postdoctoral research on spotted wing Drosophila uh, sampling and control in berry crops at the University of Guelph. And uh, prior to this, he was uh, an assistant professor in entomology at the University of Florida. Uh, where he led a research and extension program on strawberries and blueberries. So uh, thank you, Justin, and take it away. All right, well, it's my pleasure to be here online today. Um, unfortunately, not in person, but you know, this is a good substitute and we can get a, hopefully a, a, a wider audience. And um, yeah, thanks for the invitation to speak and to uh, share some of the research myself and my team here have been doing over the past few years. Um, so, fair screen. Hopefully, everybody can see that. So, I decided today to um, title my talk "Physical Control Methods for." Eliminating pests on planting material, and I'm going to, um, you know, illustrate what I mean by that using two different examples. And the first is um, cyclamen mite and steam treatments on strawberry, and then the second part of the talk will focus on Oriana fruit moth and hot water treatments of uh, apple trees. So the first thing I thought I should do is just go over some of these terms that I put in my title, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and. Physical control um, basically means modification of the physical environment to obtain a certain or required level of control. And you know, I thought I would go back to some of my IPM texts that I have here in the office and see, you know, what exactly you know they the text define physical control as. And interestingly, a lot of texts, you know, that term is not even you know in an IPM text. And if it is, it's usually a fairly short section. You know, we know the some of the you know, the big options for control, such as chemical control, biocontrol, genetic control, but sometimes, uh, you know, physical control is not one of the main ones we often think about in an IPM program. But any, anyway, it can be, it can be a very important way to um, control pests in certain um, habitats or environments. So by physical environment, um, the most texts do uh, define this as basically any abiotic variable that can affect the target pest. So those could be things like temperature, humidity, light, and even sometimes soil and uh, physical soil properties. Um, by my title, you can already guess that mainly we're going to be talking about temperature today as a physical control method. And with the idea that high temperatures, uh, we know cause insect or mite death, but the big but is that they may also negatively affect the planting material that these uh, pests are on. So that's you know, that's where the testing and uh, the research trials come in. So the other thing to keep in mind is what is the required level of control? And um, kind of today you'll see two different examples where we are looking for elimination of a pest on planting material versus, um, you know, a high level of control of the pest on planting material to improve management and to add a strategy into an integrated approach. Uh, so to get started, cyclamen mite is a very small tarsonemon mite. Uh, it goes by the Latin name Phytonemus pallidus. These adult females are 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters long, pretty much microscopic. They have kind of this football shaped. They are this tannish, orangish color usually. The larvae um, go through uh, uh, two larval stages. They're even a little bit smaller, harder to see because they're more translucent. And then the eggs are about the same size and they um, kind of an oval shape standing kind of a bit up off the leaf. And the other thing that makes cyclamite difficult to work with, difficult to find, is that it is found primarily on these fully wrapped or unopened leaves that are emerging from the crowns of strawberries. And um, so in order to find it, it's usually, you need to look at the top surface of the leaflet or the adaxial surface. Uh, and they're often at the base of the leaflet along the primary vein or the main leaflet fold. So you need to 
separate those that tri strawberry trifoliate into leaflets, spread those leaflets open, and then um, get out a hand lens and um, look carefully at those parts of the, of the leaves. Or, you know, the way we do it in the lab, and if you have a microscope, the better way is to pin those leaflets open on, on just a piece of styrofoam or something like that and look at, look at them under the microscope at about 15 to 20 times magnification. And cyclamide injury appears on the new leaves that are coming out of the crown of the strawberry plant. You know, mild symptoms can show up as this kind of crinkling and folding, a bit of discoloration on the leaves. Uh, the petioles are also a bit shortened, so we have a general kind of stunted appearance of the plants. Uh, when infestations get much more severe, the symptoms are much easier to find and, and, and to observe. We get very discolored leaves and they don't even um, fully expand properly. If cyclamide mite populations are high during uh, fruit formation, we get they do infest the buds. So you get malformed fruit that basically don't size up, they don't ripen, and they become um, unmarketable. And often cyclamide mite appears in patches, uh, small patches within fields, and you get these areas where where you might see some stunted plants, and those are good places to uh, you know look sample leaves and, and look for mites. One of the main issues that we're having now in um, many places in North America where strawberries are grown is that there are a few effective control options for cyclamen mite. And the mite has become somewhat of a resurgent pest recently, and this is largely due to the deregistration of endosulfan in, in both countries in 2016, um, went by the trade name Thiodan or Thinex, and was um, commonly used in, in nurseries to control cyclamen mite. Um, in both countries, Agrimec or Abamectin is registered and is, is the only product that is registered in Canada for cyclamen mite. You know, two applications per season, three-day PHI, and as with many product, products, it is toxic to bees. And interestingly, um, there's, there's a use restriction on Agrimec in the U.S. only where um, uh, nursery growers are not, not supposed to use Agrimec um, to treat uh, strawberry plants, plants in the nursery, but the same use restriction does not appear on the Canadian label. In the US, there are a couple other products with cyclamide mite on the label, being Portal and uh, an older product, Diazinon, uh, as well. So with few chemical control options for this pest, um, there was a lot of opportunity to look for other methods to control it, and um, one of the big Issues is that cyclamide is quite easily transferred from nursery plants to our fruit production fields on planting material. It's hard to detect at low populations and um, it easily can move. So there's an opportunity to look at heat treatment of planting material to control this pest. And a bit of background, um, heat treatment um, has been used on other, other horticultural crops to control pathogens, apples and grapes. In strawberry, there's a bit of a history of research on heat treatment to control various pests that are moved on, on the planting material, such as foliar nematodes. There's some older research on cyclamen mite by dipping strawberry runners and leaves in hot water um, with you know, um, these temperatures and durations that have been recommended. That research has mainly been done in Europe. And then there's more recently um, research showing that angular leaf spot, a bacteria that can be controlled with hot water but hot water can also damage the flowers. And the temperatures and, and times uh, in that research that provided good control are, are there. But some of the problems with hot water or heat is that, um, and especially hot water, is that some bacteria can survive and could be circulated in the hot water if the hot water is not refreshed and then refreshed. And then those, um, those spores could infect potentially the healthier transplants. And also some cultivars of strawberry are very sensitive to hot water treatments. So what has been looked at in the past few years is um, as an alternative to hot water is to use steam as the source of heat. And this is um, sometimes now being called thermotherapy for strawberry pest management. So, you know, there's advantages to using heated and humidified air, fewer adverse effects on strawberry transplants, particularly certain cultivars. And it may be easier to use on a large commercial scale than hot water dips. And Plant Sauna is a company out of the Netherlands, I believe, that is selling a unit that can be designed for this purpose of treating strawberry transplants. So in terms of what about controlling mites on 
transplants. Um, when I was in Florida, I started working with uh, Natalia Perez, who's been working on uh, steam treatment for pathogen control. And this is a, a growth chamber that she had converted to a, um, a steam chamber. And I did some work with two spotted spider mites. So um, for, that, for that pest, 48 Celsius for two hours was effective, but any, any of the temperatures we tested at 44 Celsius were not effective. Um, I started working on cyclamen mite um, when moving to agriculture and agri-food Canada, and we did some preliminary work showing that 44 Celsius for one hour was effective uh, at, at, at killing all the cyclamen mite females on leaf discs. And then some research that has come out of Norway more recently has also showed that 44 Celsius for two hours was sufficient to eliminate um, mites of all stages in strawberry crowns. So our first experiment was started back in 2019, and a lot of the work in, on cyclamen mite and strawberry has uh, been conducted by Eric Pate, who's both the Omaha Berry Specialist and a part-time master's student at the University of Guelph. So based on the numbers in the previous slide, we decided to um, test 44 Celsius for one hour and 48 Celsius for half hour, and then compare that to a control. And we did that both with mite infested plants and mite uninfested plants. And we did both of all those treatments, both on Jewel and Annapolis bare root transplants, which are two fairly common short day cultivars in Ontario. By mite infested transplants, I mean, um, we took mites that we have from a colony and we infested the crowns of these um, plants and we held those plants uh, for a few days at 12 Celsius to allow the mites to move into the crowns. And then we um, move the transplants into the um, steam chamber for 37 Celsius for one hour as a pretreatment, including the controls. And then we ramped up the temperature to either 44 Celsius or 48 Celsius and held them for those, um, those either one hour or the half an hour. And then the same day that they were steam treated, these plants were then set in research plots at a research farm here in the Niagara region of Ontario. And we did this uh, with six replications and 12 plants per plot. So if you're interested in um, you know, what, the, what the steam uh, chamber is and looks like, um, here, here's a picture in, in the basement of our research facility here. It's an old growth chamber, an old conviron with just over about a, a cubic uh, meter of space inside. Um, and this is, we used an AMRAC steam gem generator, which, um, runs on 220 volts. So this is the same steam generator that um, Natalia Perez was using in Florida. It's connected to a water softener and then the steam comes out of that black box there, the, the generator, and it goes uh, into a copper pipe that we put uh, into the floor of the, of the old growth chamber. And that copper pipe has holes and that steam comes through the floor. You can kind of see part of the floor there is a, there's an aluminum screen that has holes in it. Um, and then um, the plants are placed on the wire shelf near the top of the chamber and there's some fans to move uh, the steam around. And we always monitor the temperature with data loggers. Here is you know, an example of you know, what it looks like in the chamber while the plants are being treated. So 37 um, or you know, the average is close to that for an hour and then 40, we ramp up to 44 Celsius for an hour um, with the average being slightly over 44. Here's some of the bare root plants on trays in the chamber, and the humidity is almost always very close to um, 100%. And here are some of uh, the results. So I'm going to fly through some bar graphs here, just showing you um, results on the mites and then results on the plants. So once the plants are out there, we go and collect uh, the new leaves, the wrapped leaves, store them in ethanol, and then eventually we um, get to them and we um, count, we extract the mites from the leaves with ethanol, and we look at them under the microscope and count them in these grid dishes. So here are the mite counts um, for this first experiment, 4th of July, five weeks after planting. The counts are combined for the, both the Jewel and the Annapolis. We didn't, you know, there were no differences in how well the steam controlled the mites for the, on the different cultivars. So you can see in our controls where we infested the plants with mites but didn't steam treat them, we have quite a few cyclamen mite per unopened leaf. And in both the 44C for one hour and the 48C for half an hour, we have very few mites, much less than one per leaf. And in our uninfested plants, there are also very few mites. 
And then if we go out a little bit further, so this is 30th of August, three months after planting, same thing. Uh, we're still seeing um, quite a few mites in the controls and very few mites um, where we've steam treated the plants that were infested with mites and same with for the plants that were uninfested. So effects on the plants themselves. So here's survival about three months after planting. And you can see that for both Jewel and Annapolis, 44 Celsius for an hour, we had excellent survival, not significantly different than the control, but 48 Celsius for half an, half an hour was hard on the plants and our survival is down to 30, 40%. In terms of plant growth, so leaves per plant, um, once again, 44 Celsius for one hour had no real effect, but the plants that did survive 48 Celsius, they did not have as many leaves um, as the other treatments. And this is a little bit later on in the summer again, you can see that still the number of leaves per plant is a bit less for 48 Celsius for both cultivars. But perhaps um, the, different, the, the difference is not as great as it was earlier in the season. So these plants are perhaps catching up. We also counted runners per plant. And for Jewel, there was a bit less runners for the plants at 48 Celsius. For Annapolis, it was about the same. And then following up the next summer for yield. Um, so this graph is just the Jewel plants. And we separated out both the mite infested and mite uninfested um, plants here. Um, as expected, 48 Celsius for half an hour, the yield per plot is, a little, is less because we had fewer plants. And um, the yield is pretty good. And if not, we get somewhat of a yield boost in some of these plants for 44 Celsius for one hour. And then showing the Annapolis, um, kind of a, somewhat of a similar trend to the Jewel. Some of these plots at 44 Celsius for one hour, there's a not significantly more yield, but you can see um, the bars are a bit higher. So that was a lot of different graphs. So I thought I would just quickly summarize, you know, what we found in this experiment. So both for 44 Celsius for one hour, 48 Celsius for half an hour for both of these cultivars, you know, cyclamen mite was effectively reduced. Um, not quite eliminated, but we did a very good job uh, killing most of them. However, 48 Celsius for half an hour plant survival, plant growth for the most part, and yield are negatively impacted. So that this is probably not going to be a good option, but 44 Celsius for an hour, you know, all those things uh, did not seem to be negatively impacted. But one thing that started to um, Emerge from some of the literature um, with research happening in Florida, but also in Norway, is that um, for for good disease and nematode control, it looks like 44 Celsius for four hours um, would be needed to control um, some of these um, other pests that can be transported on on the uh, transplants. So in our next uh, experiment, we wanted to look at differences. Um, both on mites, perhaps, but also on the plants between one and four hours. And we also um, you know, have been asked by a few people, what about transplant crown size? Could it be that smaller plants are more impacted by steam treatment than larger plants? So we worked only with Jewel in this case, but we measured all these transplants and we separated them to a small and a large category based on the diameter of their crowns. And we conducted a very similar experiment to um, the one that you just saw. Uh, we did not do a full set of mite uninfested treatments at the different, um, or, or at the, the one in the four hours in this case, we just looked at these four different treatments and then did this each for both small and large crown jewel plants. So the results uh, in terms of cyclamen mite, um, these are accounts that were made almost three months after planting. So you can see mites per leaf in the control uh, was what we expected. There are mites there and both 44C for one hour and four hours did a pretty good job at controlling the cyclamen mite again. We're at about one per leaf. You know, and there were no differences between the small and large crown. So here I'm showing the data combined for both small and large. 
And then mite counts again from uh, the next summer. So this is 13 months after planting. This 15th of July is after harvest was finished, but before um, we renovated the fields. So you can see a very high number of mites per leaf by this time in the controls. But the numbers uh, where we've treated these plants at 44 Celsius are still quite low, only about five per plant. And um, a little bit more in our in the uninfested control. So this is, we didn't add mites, but we didn't do any steam treatment. So there were a few mites on those plants. But the problem with steam treating at 44 Celsius for four hours and, and is, is with the crown size. So you can see in, in, at least in this plot, small crowns, 44 Celsius for four hours. So this is a jewel. Uh, we got some pretty poor survival. Whereas with large crowns, um, you know, you could hardly tell the difference between control and uh, 44 Celsius for one hour. In terms of the survival for all the different plots, here are um, the averages. So with small uh, crown plants in the green bars, um, you can see that plant survival for four hours is around 40%. The large crowns do better at four hours, uh, not significantly less than the um, controls or for one hour. The, you know, there is a little bit of a reduction in survival down to about 70 or 80% or so. Leaves per plant, so they, for the most part, uh, controls in the 44 Celsius for one hour, um, they grew about the same number of leaves per plant. Of course, the small crown plants didn't, were a little bit smaller, so they didn't um, grow quite as many leaves. Large crown plants grew, grew more leaves and the four hours was not as detrimental. And then if we look at leaves for plant later in the summer, so almost two months after planting, there were no significant differences. So the plants that did survive four hours at 44 Celsius, eventually they did catch up and they did produce as many leaves as the control or one hour plants. And the same goes for runners that were counted on the same day. There's perhaps a little bit uh, of a dip at 44 Celsius for four hours for both small and large crowns, but wasn't significantly different. And then going to the next summer where we looked at the yields on these plants, small crown plants for the most part um, yielded a little bit less than the larger crown plants and those ones uh, for four hours had significantly lower yield as expected. But those large, large crown plants, you know, didn't matter if they had been treated for four hours or one hour or controls, the yield was about the same. So just to summarize um, that experiment, again, all those different graphs and compare it to, um, you know, what we found in the first experiment. So doesn't crown size, um, 44 Celsius for four or one hours, um, we got good cyclone mite control. The populations were reduced across the board. You know, where it really seems to be an issue is when we have small crown plants at 44 Celsius at four hours where we get poor survival. Those plants that did survive did, did, did okay. They grew, they caught up to the control plants, but they, in the end, still did not produce as much fruit. And it's, you know, I made the check, the green check marks a little bit um, bigger in terms of plant growth when we're treating at 44 Celsius for one hour, you know, there seems to be, it's non-significant, but perhaps we're getting a little bit uh, more runners per plant and, and more leaves per plant with that treatment compared to the control. So <clears throat> one more experiment that we just started last summer is basically to look at the effects of steam treatment across um, a greater number of cultivars. Um, we've only worked with Annapolis and Jewel in the previous years, so we selected 12 cultivars that are commonly grown in Ontario. Um, some of them are well established, some of them are newer, and we either steam treated them or we did not. Um, we did not infest any of these with cyclamen mite, so this is just to look at effects on the plants. Um, if you're in the strawberry business, you may notice that we did not include Malwina in this list, which is a fairly common cultivar but it was very um, hard to get last year. So we were not able to get any plants. And this time we decided to do 44 Celsius for two hours, given the fact that four hours was hard on our small crown jewel plants. 
And if you look at the literature, two hours may be enough to control cyclin mite. In other places, it also is, does a pretty good job at controlling nematodes. So we thought we'd try two hours kind of as a compromise between one and four hours. And we did the same, basically the same setup, the same as in the previous experiments. We was planting on the same day as, as the steam treatment. And here is the plant survival just a couple of weeks after planting. So the, the blue bars are the controls, oranges are, are the, the treated plants. And overall, we got quite good survival. So between 90 and, and 100%. The overall percent control across all cultivars in the control is almost 99. It's a little bit lower uh, with the treatment, but still almost 96%. That difference is significant. Um, however, you know, we're still getting high, high um, survival when we're treating. You can see maybe there's one exception, uh, which is St. Laurent, where the, um, you know, we had 100% survival in the control, but the, um, with treating, we're just a little bit below 90%. We did look at survival another month out and the numbers are down a little bit and the significant result is gone. The survival is about the same. Um, there may be a few other factors that started to impact survival here. So um, that may be coming into play rather than just the steam treatment effects. Later in the summer, we counted runners per plant. And what is interesting here is that well, there was no real effect of steam treatment overall on the number of runners per plant. Cultivar has an effect. Obviously, some cultivars produce more runners than others, but there was this steam treatment by cultivar effect, which means that for some cultivars like Annapolis, we're getting a real boost in the number of runners per plant when we treat them. And Mira is one as well, where we get some more runners. Um, but other cultivars like St. Laurent, the steam treatment seems to be negatively impacting the number of runners. It's not quite as quite as obvious for leaves per plant. You know, overall, there's no effect of steam treatment and no steam treatment by cultivar effect. But as you know, as with the runners, there's some some cultivars where steam treating is um, you know increasing the leaves per plant a little bit, and somewhere it's decreasing the number of leaves um, slightly. So just going back to this graph again, you know, I think. 44 Celsius for two hours is in terms of plant survival and plant growth. You know, most of these cultivars are tolerating it and doing just fine. And um, in terms of growth, even there may be some benefits for some cultivars for being treated. You know, maybe the exception is perhaps the cultivar Saint Laurent, where there's a bit of a seems to be a bit of a detriment. So cyclamen might we may do some sampling this coming summer and look at if there's any differences in the natural infestation levels that are in mites that were in these transplants. And then obviously we'll look at the yield this coming spring and summer. So just kind of to um, sum up and look at future directions, you know, we really want to um, continue working on steam treatment for control of cyclamen mite and move from research plots to larger scale, multi-year on-farm demonstration trials, you know, with natural cyclamen mite infestations. You know, a lot of these results are looking at, you know, what I'm calling summer mites. They're mites that come out of a colony that's been reared at a constant temperature. Um, but there could be mites that are on the transplants that have been exposed to cooler temperatures in fall or spring, and they become more winter acclimated at that point. And they may also be better able to withstand um, higher temperatures. So, um, the other thing we haven't looked at plug plants or tray plants or dormant plants, growing environment may affect um, what we're seeing as well as there could be interesting differences in day neutral cultivars and also looking at the mother plants for runner production. I guess there, we still kind of have this question, you know, do we treat for one or two hours or four hours? We um, you know, need coordination with um, and what we require for disease and nematode control. And then finally, one, one slightly uh, interesting thing is, so the way I've been conducting the experiments is to go directly from 37 to 44. But some of the other work that's been done in Florida for disease and nematode control and, and elsewhere is um, the plants have been treated at 37 um, as a pretreatment, then removed, cooled to room temperature for an hour, and then put back in the steam um, chamber. 
for the desired uh, you know, amount of time at 44 Celsius. So does this cool down phase have an effect on, on how well the plants um, deal with the heat? So I think I'm getting a bit short on time. So I'm gonna have to move fast through the oriental fruit moth part of the presentation. So this is kind of changing gears now. We're gonna look at um, a pest that is um, a tree fruit pest. It's native to southwestern China. It is spread through much of the world. Um, in, in a lot of countries, it's considered present throughout the country. Some countries, it has a very restricted distribution. In the United States, it can be found in most eastern states, as well as some of the, some of the western states, especially where there is fruit production. In Canada, it's a little bit of a different story. So Oriental fruit moth was first found in 1925 in Ontario, in the Niagara region, uh, where I am. You know, it's spread across southern Ontario, um, but it has not spread too far north. There are more recent finds kind of in more north central Ontario. In 1956, it did show up in British Columbia, but it was eradicated. And in 2002, there was a record in blueberries in Quebec. So the motivation for this research really comes from the fact that within Canada, oriental fruit moth is a quarantine pest. And there is a Canadian Food Inspection Agency directive that basically says any, to keep oriental fruit moth out of British Columbia, any hosts or carriers of this pest from any infested areas in Canada, the US or elsewhere have to be fumigated before being shipped into DC. And so fumigation was often carried out in the past with methyl bromide. It works well, but as we all know, it's being phased out because of its ozone depleting properties. And to use it these days is, is requires permits and it's, it's fairly difficult and expensive. So young fruit trees um, from nurseries are potential carriers of oriental fruit moth. So if a nursery wants to um, sell trees into BC, they have to be oriental fruit moth free. So the research is really motivate, motivated by um, collaborators in British Columbia who are looking for a methyl bromide alternative to control OFM on fruit trees. So in this case, um, we are looking at testing hot water, hot water dips of trees. Um, we know that hot water works well to control codling moth of sweet cherries and apples. Uh, codling moth is a close relative of oriental fruit moth. Hot water also can control pathogens in, in grapes and mealybugs on grape cuttings, scales and aphids on flowering plants. And compared to methyl bromide, hot water is relatively safe and cheap and easy to use. So what hot water temperature and time combination is lethal to the diapausing oriental fruit moth cocoons or pupa, but does not reduce our fruit tree survival and growth. So oriental fruit moth uh, here in Southern Ontario has three and sometimes a partial fourth generation. Um, eggs hatch, the larval, um, the larva go through five instars feeding on uh, the growing points and shoots causing flagging. And then later in the summer, those generations will start feeding on developing fruitlets and, and damage the fruit. Um, cocoons will um, form in the bark um, of the tree, and sometimes they will also drop in, and cocoon and pupate in the soil underneath the tree. And oriental fruit moth is a major concern generally in peaches, but will also affect apples and some of these other soft fruit crops. So, one thing about cocoons, especially the ones that uh, form in the fall, they are preparing themselves for winter, so they are going to enter into diapause, and, and diapause is, a, is a, this metabolic state that's similar to hibernation, and basically this allows the insects to withstand temperature extremes, so cold for sure, but potentially also could um, dictate how well they can withstand hot temperatures. So a lot of this work was done by a master student in my lab, Franklin Dubon, and we started with first rearing oriental fruit moth, and we do that on green apples at constant 26 Celsius, uh, 16 hours of light, 60% um, humidity or so, so summer conditions. But for this research, we really wanted to develop a diapausing colony because we want to test those diapausing cocoons, and that took a bit of work, and um, based on the literature and some trial and error, we've we move the eggs that have been on the apples for three days into this um, another growth chamber that's at a slightly re reduced temperature and lower uh, a 
uh, less uh, less light periods, so just 12 hours for about a month, and then we move them for two months into uh, 10, 10 degrees Celsius, and that um, initiates diapause and gets the cocoon into diapause so that we can uh, then test the effects of hot water. So once we have those diapausing cocoons in our cardboard, we can cut cut them out into smaller groups and place them in these solo cups that have screens or some of the experiments were done in these tubes um, with holes in the uh, rubber stoppers. And then these are placed in water baths at um, the temperature that uh, we would like to test. And so here's some of the experiments that um, we conducted to look at mortality. So we have our control at room temperature, no water dip. We looked at 45 Celsius from 45 to 60 minutes and then 47 from 15 to 30. A second experiment where we increased um, 47 Celsius, the duration from 30 to 45 minutes. And then we measured how well all of these have worked by looking at the emergence of the moths in these cups. So for the first experiment, you know, none of these temperature time combinations got us to 100% mortality with our diapausing cocoons. In previous work with the non-diapausing, we did get to 100%. So there is certainly, um, you know, these diapausing cocoons are able to withstand um, higher temperatures for longer. But in the second experiment, um, longer periods at 47 Celsius, we um, got to 100%. So 35 minutes um, was the minimum time. So we decided to take these results and move this to the field. Um, we started an experiment in 2021 using ambrosia apples um, from a nursery in Ontario. We wrapped our diapausing cocoons in the cardboard around the tree and then put these mesh um, sleeves around that to contain the uh, adult moths when they emerge. So these were hot water treated in these large tubs. Um, and then after treatment, the trees were returned to cold storage for three weeks before planting. Um, planting in kind of mid-May in pots in, at a research farm in, um, in the Niagara region here. Maintain those trees throughout the season. And so here are the treatments. Um, so our first treatment, we had did not put them in water. We did not infest them, just trees straight from the nursery. Treatments two through, two through six had OFM or oriental fruit moth put on them. One we had a couple of controls, so no water dip at all, and then 24 Celsius for 30 minutes. Um, and then treatments four through six um, were a couple of things that we tested in the lab. And all of those were always followed by a 24 Celsius dip for 30 minutes afterwards to cool the trees. And treatment six, um, you know, that we included that because we had done did some initial testing just before the field season and, and, and read some new things in the literature that a higher temperature for shorter duration uh, may be quite effective for. OFM. And so our plots were four trees, six replicates, 24 trees per treatment. Um, we sampled, sampled the trees and measured a lot of different things on them throughout the season. And then we destructed the trees in mid-September. Um, in terms of oriental fruit moth emergence, so um, as expected, both of these treatments, 47 Celsius for 35 minutes and 50 Celsius for five minutes, um, there were no moths emerged, 100% mortality. The control mortality is 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 higher here, 40, 50% compared to the lab, and 45 Celsius for 30 minutes, basically um, what we expected. We didn't get 100% mortality. So in terms of effects on these apple trees, we looked at percent unopened buds, and you can see that treating these trees at 47 Celsius for 35 minutes results in much higher percentage of unopened buds, almost 50 to 60%. Whereas the other treatments, a little bit higher than the control, but um, not, not nearly the same effect as 47 Celsius. Total fresh weight of the new growth on the tree. So this is all the new leaves and the new stems. Um, at the end of the season in September is um, not significantly different across all the treatments, except for 47 Celsius for 35 minutes, as you would expect. So we have very little new growth on those trees. And we looked at what the root weights were as well and no significant differences except 47 for Celsius for 35 minutes is a little bit lower there. And the same goes with the diameter of the trunk, no significant difference. 
differences. So we went back to the drawing board because we were interested in, in 50 Celsius for five minutes. But our question was, you know, how, you know, for how short of a duration at 50 Celsius could we go and still get 100% um, moth mortality? And the answer is three minutes. If we, we did it for three minutes, we got 100%. Two minutes, we're down to 70% or so. So then the following summer, we um, conducted another field experiment. We reduced the number of treatments this time, and we looked at a, a, a no water control with, and so all these trees were infested with oriental fruit moth. We looked at our other control, we just dipped at room temperature, and then we looked at 50 Celsius for five minutes, and we decided to go with 50 Celsius, for two minutes and 55 seconds based on the, um, the previous um, slide that you saw, but doing a regression. So this is what the model predicts, 99.9% .9 mortality at two minutes, 55 seconds. And we did this um, in 2022 on ambrosia, the same trees as last year, but we also uh, did all these treatments on Honeycrisp as well. We had the same, same plot arrangement, uh, monitored basically the same characteristics on the trees as well, well as OFM emergence. And the interesting thing is that this year we did not get completely complete elimination of OFM on these trees at 50 C for five minutes. So you can see there were a a couple of moths emerged. So here, I, in previous, I was showing percent mortality. This is actually just showing survival. So you can see it's kind of flipped around. So in the controls, we're, we've got plenty of adults emerging. And in the treatment, we have fewer adults. But in, you know, at 50 C for five minutes, we're averaging about half an adult per four trees or plot. And it's closer to six when we're just doing it for just less than three minutes. So this is um, not what we expected and not not, not what we're hoping for. And so we, I, in the interest of time, I didn't go through all the data on how these treatments affected these trees, but um, just looking at some of the numbers preliminarily, there were really no negative effects of about three minutes on either of these cultivars. We didn't see any negative effects of 50 C for five minutes on ambrosia, but there is a bit of reduced growth on the honey crisp when we treat them at uh, 50 C for five minutes. But in terms of why we didn't get a lack of complete control of OFM uh, this year at, at temperatures um, that were at 50 C is because we were actually just a, probably because we were just a little bit below 50 C when these trees were treated. So here's the, the five minute treatment on the left. We stuck them in just as that water temperature was below 50. And when you put the trees in, the water temperature um, decreases a little bit because of the, the temperature of the trees themselves, it starts to increase again. But overall, the average temperature was, you know, we're just a little bit shy of 50 Celsius. And in the three minute treatment here, it's kind of the same story, um, but the average is even a little bit less, 49.7. And this is compared to 2021, where we did get complete um, OFM mortality. The trees were not put in until the temperature was well over 50 Celsius. And, and during that course of that five minutes, it kept dropping, but it never dropped below 50 Celsius. So just, you know, just to show this again, we're using in this case, 200 liters of water. And one other difference between the two years is that we put 24 trees in in 2021. We put twice the number of trees in in 2022 because we had both cultivars. So that brings me to just some conclusions, um, kind of wrapping up um, our experiments on both of these pests, on, on both of these different types of plants. So it, in general, exposure to high temperature is, it can be an effective way to control a method, a control method for pests on planting material. So, but there isn't really one kind of um, one size fits all sort of solution. You know, there's a temperature and time combination that's going to be best for every pest and plant combination. Um, it's also important to consider whether we're looking at eliminating a pest, obviously then temperature becomes very critical versus whether we are trying to improve our management by controlling most of the pests. So temperature in that case may not be as critical, although we do want to hit our target temperature as, as best we can. And then, you know, we worked with one in one situation with hot water and in one situation with steam, you know, what, what is best to use for what? And in terms of the pest, um, you know, water has both the added benefit of being 
the heat killing the insect, but as well as being anaerobic, so without oxygen. And generally that results in shorter lethal times for, for pests than steam. And the other thing to consider about the pest is whether it's in diapause. So if it's in diapause, it's very likely that it's better able to withstand heat than any non-diapausing pest. Uh, same kind of thing goes for the plant. If it's dormant, it can probably withstand a higher temperature like these apple trees we're using versus a um, non-dormant strawberry plant. The dormant plants may also be less susceptible to pathogens, so that may be less of a concern um, if they get circulated in the hot water. And obviously, cultivar differences may be important in terms of the plant. So with that, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge some of the people who made this research possible, um, specifically the grad students, as well as my team here at AFC, um, collaborators at uh, various universities and, and uh, other centers at AFC. And yeah, thank you very much to the funding agencies. And thank you to you. And um, yeah, I hope there's time for some questions. Was, that's really uh, fascinating work. And it's interesting how uh, in a lot of different areas, including weeds, uh, more my realm, to bring it back to weeds, um, it, it, we're looking at steam and hot water as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting how that, that is coming about. Um, so any questions, uh, feel free to either unmute yourself or uh, pop a question into the chat box. Um, if there's not, I, I have a couple. Um, yeah, just you know, in, in weeds, um, looking at, at um, uh, treating weed seeds or, or um, uh, injecting steam or hot water into the ground to, to, to try to kill weed seeds. It's, it's also about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 115, 120, which is similar to the temperatures you were looking at, 44, 48 Celsius. Wondering what it is about that temperature. Um, is it is it our cells bursting at that temperature? Or, um, or, or what is the kind of the mechanism of do you think of uh, what's what's causing the the uh, the mites to be uh, to be killed? I stumped. I mean, you. like, <laughs> yeah, no. insect physiology. I'm not. Yeah, you know, it's hard. I don't know if there's like a magical temperature, though, because mm -hmm. it's all about you, you could you could kill insects at lower temperatures, but but it just have to be a much longer duration. I mean, I mean, I think there is certainly for certain insect or mite, perhaps you could go you get down to a certain temperature and you could you could keep it at that temperature forever almost. I mean, not forever, but for a long period, and 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 it's never going to die. But you know, one one thing that I didn't mention is that I've also been involved in work on controlled atmosphere temperature treatments for cyclone mite control um, that's been done in Quebec, and, and so that involves uh, altering the carbon dioxide and the oxygen levels as well as the temperature. But generally, the protocols in that are to use much lower temperatures, like if I remember right, like low 40s but for much longer periods like up to 24 hours so um i think i think you probably kill insects or mites at almost any temperature it's just going to be how does the plant react to that mm -hmm. um that i think that's probably probably the almost the harder thing to figure out mm -hmm. Um, looks like there's a question from, from Marvin Pritz. I'll, I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Yeah. Uh, excellent presentation, uh, says Marvin. Uh, many ways to go with this research. Have you thought about preconditioning at a low temperature then warming up to 44C as opposed to starting at an ambient temperature? It might be more of a shock to the mite than to the plant. So, like the plants are at room temperature, we take them out of the fridge, they get to room temperature, and then we put them in the chamber at the 37 Celsius for an hour as like a preconditioning. That is mainly to precondition the plants to better withstand the higher temperatures. Um, how that preconditioning affects the mites. 
or potentially other insects on the plants. Um, well, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to precondition them in a way that they are not being killed at the, at least the temperatures and times that I've been testing. So, just the fact that um, they were taken out of the refrigerator and immediately, you know, put up to forty four. Well, so so they weren't. So I mean, we take them out of the fridge. They sit at room temperature, you know, for a short period just to to but, warm up, and then they go to thirty seven Celsius for an hour in the chamber and then they go up to 44 celsius right so still a pretty quick change from the refrigerator Fa to yeah fairly quick but for the yeah. most part you know the plants the strawberry plants look pretty good you know other than <clears throat> other than our small crown jewel plants that we tried yeah. yeah i'm wondering about uh, other ways to improve the selectivity uh to you know to, to harm the mites more than the plant um mm. could you um and maybe soak the plants in cold water um you know to to um, you know, encourage them to uptake cold water thereby maybe reducing the temperature of the plant internally so that it wouldn't get as hot uh when placed into the steam yeah i mean possibly my thoughts on that are we don't want to add too many steps yeah. for the the grower or or you know whoever is going to use this. And the other thing is that the mites are, you know, pretty. You know, they're they're in the crowns of the strawberry plant, so they're they can be quite far. You know, they're not inside the plant, but they're down they're down in the, those you know, those cracks and crevices and into the crown, so they're they're pretty protected themselves. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know, with the, with the hot water treatment, I, I'm wondering. Um, you know, anytime I put something in hot water, there's all these bubbles that stick to it. That I don't know if they they're they're still attached to the plant or whatever it is when you know when it's being submerged. Do those bubbles eventually kind of shake off? I'm wondering if that could be a potential area. You know, if there's bubbles, uh, air bubbles around the you know the mm -hmm. crown, could that be kind of harboring? Um, yeah, we only did the hot water with the trees and. Mm -hmm. I, from my memory of observing when these trees got put in the hot water, I don't, I don't remember seeing bubbles or if there were, there weren't many. So, um, I don't, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay. Any other questions? Anya, Anna, you ever ever uh, looked into uh, hot water or uh, or uh, steam? They they might be eating their lunch currently. I probably shouldn't call on people. <laughs> I know I'm here. You can call on me. Um, I yeah, I actually have recommended growers to do steam treatments, and you know this is just repeating what I've read online. And the advice that I found for cyclamen mites and strawberry was submerging underwater uh, also at 44 degrees celsius um and i can't remember the duration anymore but this is i guess yeah in my mind it's just a lot easier to submerge into a pot of warm water than it is to like steam them somehow and control the temperature of the steam uh but i definitely took a lot of screenshots of all the visuals and the graphs because mm -hmm. just such helpful information all right yeah, I think it's, you know, if you're at a certain, if you're growing strawberries at a certain scale, yeah, dipping them in, in hot water and keeping that hot water, you know, at a constant temperature is probably, probably pretty doable. Um, I think at a, at a larger scale, steam may be the better option, but yeah, you need a lot of different, you need to, you need to buy a piece of equipment or you need to, you know, buy some components and get them put together. Um, the steam generator unit that I uh, purchased to, to put onto that old growth cabinet, I think at, about five years ago, was about 6,000 US dollars. So, it, it, you know, it, it costs something, but it's not, it's not hugely expensive. And it can be used for multiple crops, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, we've been testing and using on strawberries, but I'm sure there could be other applications for other crops 
um, for the pests as well. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, this is Anna. I This isn't directly related, but while you were talking, I was thinking about maybe something parallel is apple replant disease and all of the anaerobic disinfestation that's happening. So there's a lot of work where they're using covers and that's anaerobic and temperature over a long period of time that seems to help with that complex. Yeah. Um, so I just, I think there's a lot of applications. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. It's really exciting to hear about your work. Yeah, great. Thank you. I think I saw a question in the chat. Paul. Yeah, I can read that um, from Marvin again. Um, has anyone looked at a high CO2 or low oxygen as a way to weaken the mites, but not the plants? Uh, yeah, so I was just kind of briefly referring to that in my answer to the other question was, um, yeah, there's a group at Laval University in Quebec who has been looking at that um, with some of the Quebec growers and um, it's often referred to as CAT or controlled atmosphere temperature treatments, where it's a combination, a unit that can control both the CO2 by elevating it to, I think, about 50% and lowering the oxygen to about 10%, and then increasing the temperature with steam to, uh, I think it was around 30, high 30s or low 40s, and then uh, putting cyclamen mite infested plants in that unit and um, it's an excellent, excellent way for controlling mites. Like with the steam, we get good control, but we don't seem to quite totally eliminate them. There's always a couple left. But with with the research that that student did at Laval, like pretty much those plants are are mite free after that treatment. Um, the trick has been the effects on the plants. So those conditions um, seem to have some negative impacts on flowering of strawberries. Um, so they that that may not be useful. It may be more useful for disinfecting plants that are destined for nursery production, so the mother plants, because there was not really any negative effects on runnering when when that was used. Great. Okay. Well, Justin, thank you. This was uh, this is really enlightening. 